All right, on that note, we are going to switch gears now. Talking about music, let's get to the heat of elections that is coming in from UK. Results from the UK elections are all set to be announced today and vote counting is currently, as we speak, underway. The man we're showing you on our screens, you already recognize Rishi Sunak, the first Indian origin Prime Minister of Britain who took the reins, remember, less than two years ago amid a very bitter power struggle. As we speak, he's facing crushing anti-incumbency. All right, so what does this mean for UK? What does this mean for India? Akansha is with us in the studios to take you through all of that. Akansha. Thank you, Sonal, and thank you, Toya, because remember, this time, as far as UK is concerned, it seems at least the pollsters have been proven right, unlike India, because it's been a colossal defeat for the Tories, as was already predicted in the polls. But on that note, important to also highlight why, in fact, the Tory uh, wave has in fact been demolished, which has in fact been governing the UK for 14 years. Let me also break down for you what explains this anti-Tory wave as Keir Starmer is all set to become the new Prime Minister of the UK. Well, the first and foremost, most important point is healthcare because 7.6 million people are currently on the NHS waiting list. Remember, the wait list is something that Keir Starmer has also promised in his campaign that he will be reducing it at the same time let's not forget the economy it's the worst income growth for generations there's in fact been uh, no sort of uh, reduction of the pay parity the gap between the rich and poor it's only worsened thanks to the pandemic and not to forget the war in ukraine at the same time there's also a crackdown on immigration which is something that in fact the Tories had promised to take forward, let's not forget, the Rwanda deportation plan as well. And the net migration, in fact, has been touted at an all-time high. And the Britons, in fact, have been blaming the current Conservative government for this all-time high as far as immigration is concerned, not to also forget the illegal immigration that's been taking place. The cost of living crisis, well, the rise is largely due to COVID and Ukraine war, as I also mentioned earlier and those are some of the very crucial factors but at the same time there's also a, a housing crisis as you can see unaffordable housing uh, prices because they, and, and the reason that's being attributed to this is a shortage of dwellings this is in fact a very very crucial in fact uh, uh, aspect because remember the polls that have also been conducted have in fact discovered that people from the age of 20 till 40 have been able to in fact buy houses but uh, all those who've been above the age of 40 have in fact not been able to afford houses. Now let's come down to the India factor as far as UK polls are concerned. You're talking at a time when uh, the UK will be bidding goodbye to Rishi Sunak who's the first uh, 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 Prime Minister of Britain of Indian origin and he will now be finally moving out of 10 Downing Street. But you know this is how crucial India has been as far as the entire polls are concerned. 1.8 million Indian origin voters are in Britain. That's a massive diaspora. In fact, Pakistani diaspora is only next after India. 107 Indian origin candidates uh, are up for 650 seats, which has been a gradual increase as far as UK elections are concerned. At the same time, 30 Indian origin are in fact uh, uh, have also been fielded as conservative candidates. Out of these 30 Indian origin, 23 of them are in fact new. Let's now also tell you about as far as the Labour candidates are concerned, 33 Indian origin uh, candidates as far as uh, Labour candidates are concerned, 26 of them are again new. 11 Indian origin Liberal Democrat candidates have also been fielded. Not to forget, 13 Indian origin candidates uh, are in fact from the Reform Party in UK and also the Green Party, which are also the other parties that are in faith. Five Indian origin candidates from the Scottish National Party that has also played a very significant role in this overall election. On that note, in fact, let me also bring in my guest today. I'm joined by Stella Sankido, who is in fact uh, been a former advisor to the Labour Party. She's also a political commentator. Thank you so much, Stella, for joining in. You know, what was heartwarming was the message that has just been delivered by Keir Starmer. He's gone on to say that you've cast your vote and even if you have not voted for me, I will still deliver. 
Of course, because the majority that he uh, that he has won tonight, it is a historic victory of immense proportion, proportions. It is bigger than Tony Blair's majority. It is likely going to be bigger than Tony Blair's majority in 1997. We do not have yet all of the results, but it looks like it's going to be even larger. And this means that Keir Starmer is going to be the prime minister and he will have uh, constituencies that are a lot more varied politically than previous prime ministers. So he has to appeal, and he has indeed managed to appeal to very different types of voters. And this is what he was trying, this was the message that he was trying to convey right. his speech, and this was the way that he was campaigning all of this time. You know, Stella, as the former advisor to the Labour Party, what do you hinge this uh, victory on? Is it the economic turmoil or the simplistic need for change for all of those people in Britain? Because remember, this does seem like a dawn of new change, and quite literally, because as we speak, I know it is the crack of dawn over there in London today. It is. It is almost 4 a.m. The polls closed at 10 p.m. We are still seeing the results uh, roll in. As you said, all of the factors that you mentioned are very important. It is worth noting that the UK, unlike the rest of Europe, we had the European elections earlier last week and we saw that a lot of European countries have started having supporting more right wing parties. But the UK is beating that trend and has just elected a, a more centrist left wing party, so the Labour Party. The reasons that you mentioned, so the fact that people are not able to buy houses, the cost of living crisis, energy security, immigration is for sure a very, very big, big issue for a lot of people because they feel like the conservatives for the last 14, 15 years have been promising them that they will bring immigration down. But rather than bring it down, they have tripled it in some cases. You know, Stella, it's very interesting that you talk about immigration, which is why I was about to ask you quickly, because both the parties, whether it is the Labour or the Tories, they both have, in fact, uh, announced to crack down on immigration. Mm -hmm. In fact, you have Rishi Sunak's Rwanda plan as well, uh, which the Labour is going to scrap but what are those points that, in fact, differentiate their policies when it comes to the crackdown on immigration? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Both all, all, all the parties uh, that that were contesting the, the, to, that were actually likely to become a, a governing party said that they're going to reduce immigration. So the difference is that Keir Starmer has made it very clear he's not going to keep the Rwanda plan. You have to remember that Keir Starmer's background is he used to be a human rights barrister. So for him, human rights are very important. He would not put up with something like the Rwanda plan. But also the other point that the Labour Party has been making is that the Rwanda plan is very, very expensive and only deals with less than 2% of asylum cases. So the difference is that the Labour Party has been saying that what they want to do is they want to renegotiate with the European Union so that they have a returns agreement. So that if someone comes illegally to the UK through boat crossings or whatever other means, that they are then returned. And there is a quicker processing because that's a big, a right. big factor in the big backlog, the, the processing. Stella, I'm running short of time and many in India would want to know how the Labour Party will in fact be shaping up the new foreign policy and the bilateral ties between New Delhi and London. Because remember, there's a lot right now which is stagnating as far as the FTA is concerned. Students are also concerned in terms of their admissions in the UK. How uh, are we now uh, expected to look at the Labour Party, which, you know, has a history of having frosty relations with New Delhi? Mm -hmm. A new government means a new page for the trade negotiations. The Labour Party has shown they are very, very serious about the relationship with India. They showed that with the visits that they, they paid to India before they uh, before the campaign started. Earlier this year, you saw the deputy uh, the deputy leader of the Labour Party, Angela Rayner. You saw the shadow foreign secretary, David Lamy, visiting India. They've yes. both claim that they have a big interest in the country and it is very, very important strategically for, for, for the Labour Party that they prove as soon as possible that they can bring India on board as a serious trading partner. Stella, uh, the Indian uh, British voter, in fact, has in fact been wielding a lot of influence uh, in Britain. How has it now come uh, to play such a pivotal role? Because remember, you're looking at a diaspora with 1.8 million people. 
Mm-hmm. Of course, but the cultural heritage of, of Indian origin uh, British people is, is huge and immensely influential in the UK. And some of the numbers that you were mentioning before are absolutely incredible. Not just how many Indian origin voters there are, but how many of, there are, of them are running for office. They are running to become councillors, they are running to become MPs. So the influence of the Indian, Indian diaspora is absolutely massive. That's in fact a very heartwarming change. We'll in fact have to see if there are any Indians who will make it to the cabinet, the upcoming cabinet of the Labour Party. I'm afraid I'm running short of time and I'll have to leave it at that. Many thanks to you, Stella Sankido, for joining in on The Breakfast.